In a typical melody structure, it is common for the structure to be separated into two different parts, antecedent and consequent, or question and answer. At the end of an antecedent, the music will sound interrupted or unresolved, so as to drive the music forward to the next phrase. This is often done by ending the melody on a fifth degree note, also known as the dominant note, as it sounds unresolved. As you learned previously, chords have different functionalities. Recall that dominant chords in particular are often very unresolved. This makes dominant chords a good choice for use at the end of antecedents. Do note that you don't always have to end your antecedents on a dominant note or chord. Later on, we will be showing you some examples of Toho music ending on various degrees at the end of an antecedent. For example, you may encounter some antecedents that end with a dominant melody note, but the underlying chord progression plays a tonic chord. On the other hand, at the end of a consequent, the music will usually sound resolved so as to properly conclude the melody. This is often done by ending the melody with a tonic note over a tonic chord since it sounds resolved. However, it's not necessary to resolve at the very end of a consequent. For example, when you are trying to lead to a new section, your melody may resolve just a little before the end of the measure. This leaves room for what's called an anacrusis, or pickup in non-fancy terms. Anacrusis are the notes that lead into a melody or section before the section's first measure. Here's a transcription of a melody line from Dormi's theme in the key of A minor. In A minor, the dominant note is E, so the antecedent ends on E. The underlying chord is the dominant chord major 5, which gives that part of the song an unresolved feel and forward momentum. Meanwhile, the consequent ends with the tonic note A over the tonic chord 1, which brings the melody to a satisfying conclusion. Every section of a song is a group of melodies that are different enough from surrounding groups of melodies, in that the listener senses that the song has moved somewhere. Suppose your section is 16 measures long. You can split this section into four different mini-segments, which are labeled depending on their content. For example, your melody has an antecedent and consequent that are both four measures long. This makes the melody eight measures long in total. We can repeat this melody as it is to fill in the 16 measure long section, labeling the antecedent as section A and the consequent as section B. We can say that the section that we just created has an ABAB form. There are various other section structures that you can try, other than ABAB. For example, your section may have an ABAC form, which is similar to ABAB in that the melody is repeated until partway through, at which point the melody ends in a completely different way. If you notice the various melody forms listed above, you can see a similarity. They all have some form of repeated section. Repeating part of a melody is good, as it ingrains the melody into the listener's mind. On the other hand, too much repetition will make your song boring, so try to keep your use of repetition under control. Finally, we will look at how sections fit together to form an entire song. As with writing a single melody, there is no strict formula for linking sections together. However, there is the one vague criterion that you do need to fulfill. That is, make your song flow well. The first step is to categorize your sections into those that should serve as the main verses of the songs, and those that serve as bridges between the verses. Like mixing up moves in fighting games, you also need to mix up your sections by linking verses to bridges, which then link to other verses. To continue the analogy, Having a song that seems to only consist of verses is like trying to win with one string of inputs. It only works for so long before it simply gets boring and weak. Remember that your song needs to have direction as a whole, not just the individual melodies. Just mindlessly linking verses and bridges without regard for flow will cause the song to sound aimless or lacking in purpose. This would go against the major point of Toho style music, which is to maintain movement in a focused manner. Designate one section to start the song off. That section will be the introduction of the song. An intro can be either a verse or a bridge. It'll just lead to whatever it isn't. From there, you follow an alternation of verses and bridges, paving the road towards the final verse, known as the climax of the song. The climax can also lead to a lower activity outro, 
which is entirely optional. Most Toho songs loop, so pick an appropriate loop point to return to after the final section of your song. Loop points tend to be anywhere from the introduction to the first verse afterward. For example, Sword of the Fallen Hero, Legend of Sanada has the following structure. So at this point, you might be looking at all this and going, where do I even start? Well, actually, it's quite simple. Don't know what to do for your song structure? Just rip it from some other song. Now that we've covered the big picture, there are some ways to spice up your song. Suppose you have a section that seems like it's the right length, but it feels as if it's dragging on for too long. You can avoid this feeling by changing the key being used starting from the second half. The term for this in theory is transposition, which is the process of moving a set of notes up or down a certain interval. Here, we're transposing an entire half section's worth of notes. Changing keys will affect the mood of the song because of the contrast between the previous key and the new key, which gives the feeling of a new section without actually creating a new one. So how do you change keys? There are fancier ways to change keys, but we'll cover them in a future episode. The most common intervals to transpose by are minor second, minor third, and major third. The minor second is especially common. In general, transposing a song upwards helps to create more energy and to sound brighter due to the increasing pitch. Transposing a song downwards has the opposite effect. The most common place to transpose is when the final iteration of a climax melody begins. You can also choose to transpose at the midpoint of a bridge. If you change keys in your song, remember to transition back to the original key in time for the loop. 